Hey everyone, welcome to another UI tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna be going over how to create a search bar within the UI. So essentially like think of if you have a list of items and you're just looking through all of them and um, like you're trying to find a specific name or the item type, or maybe you're just like searching for, I don't know, the, the damage, uh, whatever it may be, uh, you'd be able to do that. Uh, or if like, let's say you have like a list of quests that you're just wanting to filter out to find a specific one or I don't know, whatever you want to be searchable, you can create. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing in this example is we're gonna have the item's name, uh, we're gonna have the class type, and then I also made the damage ser searchable. Granted, I don't know if anybody would ever search for like damage, like you're not gonna search for, um, does something have the damage of 17? Like that's very weird. Uh, but I wanted to throw in a float there just so that, to show you that you can use um, floats, uh, strings, name, what, whatever. As long as you convert it into a string, that's what matters. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's get into it. Okay, and I did prepare a few things beforehand. Now I have the common UI plugin turned on. Uh, if you wanna follow exactly what I'm doing, you're gonna have to t turn on that plugin. Otherwise, uh, you don't really need to follow along. Uh, some of the stuff that I use can be used for the natural like user widget stuff. Uh, just letting you know that I am using that in case you can't find certain things. Anyway, so I have the inputs set up just because um, that's what's necessary. I have 26 images that I'm going to be using as items. And then I also have the structure created. The structure is going to contain the name, the class. Let's actually just change that to type. I think that just makes more sense. Uh, and then damage and image. Uh, so we're going to be using the name, type, and damage as searchable stuff so that we can um, find information and then use it uh, within populating the correct search bar. And then all this is set up within a data table. There's 26 items, all with a name, type, damage, image, row names. I just kind of put to the same number. Um, it's just easy for me, but you can set it up however you want. But yeah. So I did that beforehand just to help speed it up. And then we also have a HUD that is absolutely blank. It's just a canvas with a border. And then if we were to play the game, I also set it up so that the canvas is uh, created through the player character. I just did the very standard stuff to help speed this along and save us like 10 minutes of recording time. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and create our widgets. So widgets. Now, if you have seen my list view and tile view video, uh, you're gonna notice that a lot of this is damn nearly the same uh, because we are gonna be utilizing the tile view and then we're gonna be using that uh, to pretty much populate and remove uh, depending on what we searched. So let's go ahead and create our widget that we're gonna have to put into our HUD here. So we're gonna go ahead and do widget here. We're gonna go to common, now you could do an activatable widget, but in this case, I'm just gonna use a user widget uh, because I'm not gonna actually activate it, uh, but you can go ahead and use it however you see fit. So we're gonna name this search bar. This is gonna be our widget here. And then let's actually just go ahead and search our search bar here. We're gonna throw that in to the canvas. I accidentally put it on the border on accident. And we're just going to put it directly in the center at the moment. And we're going to do a 500 by 500. We're not going to touch it, do anything here at the moment, uh, but just so it's there. So now let's go into our actual search bar here. Let's grab ourselves an overlay. Throw that down here. Within this overlay, what we're going to want to do is we need to have the player able to enter in text. Now the Easiest thing is the editable text. It allows a user to enter in the text and then we can get the input and use that however we want. We're gonna go ahead and hit that fill horizontal. And let's also wrap this with a do to do size box. Uh, we're gonna make sure the height is actually always at least like 40 so that it's no longer, um, let's switch that to desired and then let's do width of like 500 that way there's always that edible text available and visible 
And then to let the user know that they can type something here under hint text, we're going to do search here, dot, dot, dot. And it kind of populates like that. So that is super easy. And the main thing why we want this is because we have the on text change feature and that will, every time they change the text here, we're going to update the list of widgets that we have. And then it'll be super easy. It's basically like a for loop that checks if the text contains within all of those. Super easy, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, but first we have to go through all the steps to make that possible. Now I re remove the numbers because like I said, I just don't like them. Um, so let's go ahead and start creating the tile view. Now there's a lot of things that we have to do to create a tile view. It's basically lots of uh, different blueprints you have to make along the way. So once we add this into the overlay here, Um, maybe overlay was a bad decision. Let's actually replace this with vertical box. There we go. And then hit that fill button. Let's get rid of all of those numbers and let's actually wrap this with a size box as well. You don't have to actually add the size box here. You could do it here uh, for the search bar and just specify. If you would like, um, you can do it however you want. I'm just going to enter in the specific dimensions that I want to have entered in uh, just because this is what I tested it out and I'm just going to have it here. You, you can design your widgets however you feel like it. This is just to showcase the functionality and how to build it. So the width is going to be the exact same. We're going to do 500 and then height. We're going to do what is 40 minus 500? What is that 460? There we go. Cool. And then if we compile, we notice that we have an error and that's because we need to enter in a entry widget class. Now, before we actually get into that, uh, there's a couple things we need to do with the tile view and that is to create an object. Now the object that we create is going to create those entry class. So when we need to create that object, what we're gonna do is on the pre-construct, we're gonna grab this tile view over here and we're gonna get data table row names. So we're gonna get the data table that we've created. Search bar, we're in a loop. And then we're gonna data table, get data table row. We're gonna select that data table again. And we're just gonna plug those in. And basically what this sets up is that it's just going to loop through every data table row that is available and create it. And we're going to create the initial widgets. And all of these initial widgets are going to create, um, huh. if we break this, is all of the information that we have here. And all of this information is what we need to pass along into an object, which will get added into this tile view. Now, first, we got to have to create that object. So if we have a row, we're gonna create, um, oh, I think it's construct object from class. But as of right now, we don't have one to construct yet. So now that we have this set up, let's go ahead and create that. So we're gonna go ahead and go into blueprints and we're gonna hit object here, BP, and search object. Okay. Now this object will need to pass along the struct that we have. So this struct is gonna need to go into here. So we're gonna have to create a variable for that struct. I called it search info. You can name it whatever you want. And then for this object, I'm just gonna name it struct here. And then we're going to go ahead and select search object. Oops search object. Oh, and I forgot to expose this. That's very important. Let's refresh that. And now you can plug that in. So now that will pass that along. And then we we'll go to add item. And what this will do is this will now create a entry widget based upon this search object. So now we can actually set up that entry widget and then set up 
all the information based upon what this struct is passing along. This is the first step. I know it's a lot for a tile view, but we'll get there. So now let's go into our tile view widget, selecting here. We're gonna hit that plus button, although there's really no need because you basically have to start from scratch anyways. But we'll name this UI uh, search entry. Now this is basically gonna be my item. Now my item is only gonna contain a um, image and three texts. So it's gonna be very simple. I'm not gonna like try to format everything perfectly, but I'm just gonna showcase how you can create it, search it. Uh, so let's go ahead and just throw in an overlay. I guess we could probably do even less than an overlay. We could probably do maybe like a grid, no. Mm, stack? You know what? No, it's fine. We'll do an overlay. It's okay. Like I said, you can format however you want. Uh, but for this, we'll just use an overlay. And then for that overlay, we're going to do a uh, image. This image is going to span across everything. So this is going to be our item icon. And then we want the text. So we're actually going to have three of these. So we're going to go ahead and paste, paste. Because we're going to have our name. Let's just rename that to name as well. We're going to have type. And then we're going to have damage. And then for all three of these, because I want them to essentially be stacked up on each other, I'm going to have a wrap with a vertical box. And then this vertical box, I'm going to set to fill everywhere. Let's give these guys the fill button. We're going to also align it to the center. And then for the color, let's just go with my favorite type of color to use and everything purple. Awesome. So now we have, oop, let's get rid of those numbers, image. Now we have the basis to go off of. Now let's go into our graph. We don't need any of this. Now you'll notice that some interface stuff was created. Now we don't actually need any of these because this is the wrong interface and it bugs me that it exists. So go ahead and delete that and type in list. And we're going to use user object list entry. And then from here, we'll have the on list item object set. Now, what we need to do is this will pass along the object that we created. So this, which is passing along a struct, but we need to be able to get that struct into here. Now, the simplest ways to cast, but I'm going to go ahead and create a blueprint interface. It's going to take us slightly more time. Uh, but it's just the more proper way to do it because otherwise you'd end up be casting to the amount of items that we you have, which isn't as great. But I mean, at the same time, you're still using an interface for all of them. But nonetheless, do optimization to your best knowledge. And we'll call this BI uh, search list. There's a lot of word that uses search, which is probably going to be confusing. And we're going to name this send info. And what this will do is this is going to send the search list, uh, search info. There we go. Struct. So what we would do is under our search object, we're going to go ahead and add this search list. We're going to go ahead and click that and we're just going to plug that in. So in our search object, we're just passing along that struct. Super easy. Back to our search entry. We will then do send info. And we'll have that struct available and let's go ahead and just promote that and store it here. And for safety measure, let's actually for our search entry, go ahead and add that as well, because we may need it later. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and do that. So under send info, let's just plug that in just in case. 
So let's go ahead and grab all of our text. I just realized I didn't put them all as variables. So go ahead and do that. Uh, you can also just like hold shift and it will highlight all of them. Or you could do like control and click all of the individual ones, whatever. Quick tip that nobody really needs. Um, all right, we got image, we got name, we got type, we got damage. So these are the four that we have. What's the order that we put? I think it's like this, or I could just break this. Break search info, okay. Okay, so image is last, so it's like this is the order, okay. So now we're going to want to set the text for all of our three texts. So we're going to go to set text. And let's get some space, copy, paste, copy, paste, plug that in. And plug all of these in here, like such. Type. And then we're going to also set brush. Oh, actually, let's do one thing better. So instead of using an image, let's go ahead and use a lazy image. Just so if it's never on screen, then we, you don't actually have to. Um, <clears throat> sorry, coughing. Uh, then you don't have to use more resources. Uh, so let's go ahead and plug type to type, damage to damage, and then let's go ahead and grab our image again, set texture, uh, set brush from lazy texture, and we can plug that in here. Okay. That will automatically compile that. That should be all we need to do here for now. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to our search bar. And perfect, you'll see the entry widget is populating. There's a damage type and name. Now we do have to set all of these to the appropriate stuff. So um, let's go ahead and do, do, do. Let's see if it's working right now. So we hit play. So we do see all of it populating. Now my text is overlapping and I think I put them in the wrong order actually. Uh, let's go damage type name. That is the wrong way. So damage is on top. Let's put that down. Uh, okay. All right. Let's actually decrease that text. I just realized that it's so large. Uh, font, uh, let's change to like 18. Think that'll be readable? Uh, it's better. Some stuff is still going off, but nonetheless, you can tell that there's text there. It is changing. Now, the next thing we need to do is set up so that the search, so if we actually type anything, it should adjust all of these items here. So now that our entry is set up, let's go into our search bar. So next thing we need to do is that for our editable text, whenever the text is changed, we need to adjust all of our information. Uh, so the thing we're gonna do is create a new function. We're gonna call this filter items. We're gonna make the input as a text and we're gonna call this change text. So we're gonna go ahead and drag that off and we're gonna plug that in here. And essentially what we need to do is very similar to what we're doing here. The only thing is we need to add in a feature where between these two, we want to, or I'm sorry, between these two, uh, we want to filter out whether or not we're going to construct it. So depending on what breaks out of this, we want to make sure one of these actually contains the text here. And then if it does contain, we will construct it. If not, uh, we'll do nothing. So since we're actually going to be reusing the information, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to 
do this. And we're going to create a macro. And it's just going to be get data table. And what we can do here is that in our filter items, we're going to go ahead and get data table. And we can do the exact same thing. So if we open up, we'll notice that the output is showing that when the row is found. Now, if you want to pass along the completed, you could do like that. And then it will have the completed in case you need to use that. You don't have to do a macro. I'm just, instead of duplicating code, might as well. So nonetheless, we could do that. I have the search info here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to promote this to a local variable because I'm going to be using this struct uh, multiple times and I don't want to, uh, uh, let's call that local struct. I'm coughing a lot and I do apologize if it sounds loud on this mic. Um, it happens. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is the first thing first, if the text is ever empty, we want to populate everything. So if it's empty, we're going to go ahead and change text. If it is equal to exactly, actually, let's do two string equal to nothing. We're going to branch. Plug that in. And I'm just making that a little neater. If this is in fact true, then we are going to construct object from class search um, search object, and we're going to plug in our local struct. And then we're also going to grab our tile view, add item, and just like that. And actually, uh, one last thing that I kind of skipped over is we need to make sure that whenever we're adding items, we remove all the previous ones. Uh, so what we'll do is we're going to head and clear list items. And for safety measures, we're going to do the same thing over here. Actually. Better yet, we're going to add it to our macro so that we just utilize the macro. So I can get rid of this and we save ourselves some time. Well, we would have saved ourselves some time if I thought of that beforehand. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and clear the list. We'll get the data table information. We're going to construct that object and add it into our tile view. Now we need to make sure to check if any of the items in our search um, equal to the struct. So we're going to go ahead and grab this struct. And we're basically going to do a massive contains within all of them. So we're going to go ahead and break. And which one is the string? Is this text name? Oh, I didn't actually use any for. Uh, so we're going to do a two string. And we're going to type contains. And the substring is going to be the to change text here. Which will plug in. And then what I'm actually going to do is because I hate how big this is, this is completely unnecessary. You don't need to do it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the um, contains. And we're going to plug that in there. Um, substring should be below. Go back to filter items. Okay. I just don't ha like how large it is. And for clean purposes here, uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this here. And we're going to plug this into all the substrings. And convert that. And convert that. And then from here, we're going to do or plug and plug. 
and then we're going to do a branch. And then from this branch, we're going to plug into here. So essentially, if the changed text is empty, we're going to create it. So no matter what, if it's empty, automatically create. And then we're also going to check that if any of these contains this text that we searched, we will then create that object. So theoretically, this should work as long as I didn't forget a step. So now let's go ahead and type in emerald. So that works. You could type in gem, ruby. Uh, see, uh, you can even do the in the middle. You can also do numbers. I don't know why I actually added that. And kind of, I made it really hard to see. So let's actually do this. Um, for the text, let's have a outline color of one. And that way they're readable. So now you can actually see it here. So 12, 15, four, etc. So just like that, you have the search bar. And then as a kind of a bonus, I'll just show you what I meant with there are still technically buttons. Uh, so what you can do is that for the, let's close that, let's close that. For the tile view, you could do on item clicked, or you could do uh, on item double clicked in case you want that. Uh, there's an item hovered as well. So if you want something to happen whenever you hover it, uh, hmm. we're going to do send info for both. And you can do break, break. So let's do a print string here. Plugging that in here, and let's type in the type. So now if we go in here and click on the images, we, ah, we are seeing amethyst. And if I double click, you see gem. So you're seeing both because on click is banner power, cutting essence, corrupt core. But if I double click, you get the type. So like that, you are able to pass along the information. Now, if you actually want to have buttons, I recommend to see my other video because I go over on how to make the buttons work. This is mainly about search bars. But with that, we have a working search bar. You can click on things, you can get the information, you can pass along the information, uh, as well as you also get this automatic search bar, or not search bar, scroll bar for all of your items. Just make sure you set a size for it because otherwise it'll just go off the screen. Uh, if you enjoyed these type of tutorials, please leave a comment. Um, also give any type of suggestions on features, uh, just as long as you don't tell me to create an inventory system. Uh, I get it a lot, but, um, I'm not going to create my own inventory system. If you want to just see features that you normally see in the UI of an inventory, you could definitely like give those suggestions. Uh, anyways, thanks for all your guys' support. Um, yeah, all the self promo stuff, join the patron, blah, blah, blah. Talk to you guys later.